About 2.7 million Americans have epilepsy. One in 100 people will develop epilepsy, and one in 10 people will have a seizure in their lifetime. We asked Dr. Mary Zupontz of Children's Hospital of Orange County to explain this condition. Epilepsy is having two or more unprovoked seizures. And unprovoked meaning not due to meningitis or encephalitis, which are infections of the brain. Uh, head trauma can sometimes provoke a, a seizure that doesn't result in continued seizures. Um, uh, so those would be some provoked seizures. There's also febrile seizures that occur in young children. It's a genetic disorder and occurs only in the context of fever without an intracranial brain infection. And febrile seizures are generally short, scary, generalized tonic-clonic seizures, so the child's shaking and unconscious, sometimes turns blue, but it only occurs in the context of, the, of a fever, and it's outgrown typically by five years of age. We asked Dr. Zupons, when does epilepsy typically present? Epilepsy typically begins in uh, er infancy and early childhood. It's a bimodal curve. In other words, there's a peak in infancy and early childhood, and then now there's a peak in the geriatric, older population. Uh, so as we've lived longer, uh, the, the onset of epilepsy can be in our older population, typically due to stroke, Alzheimer's, atherosclerosis. In babies and infants who have uh, epilepsy, especially if they have infantile spasms, need to be recognized early, not later. The epilepsy is caused by an electrical storm in the brain, and the brain in a baby is not hardwired. It is ready to make connections and to be molded into the two-year-old child that's going to occur in about two years. So a baby's brain is really not well developed and not well connected. Well, if in the midst of this process there's ongoing seizures, the brain gets hardwired for continued seizures. Dr. Zupons tells us about epileptic syndromes. We as diagnosticians, as pediatric epilepsy specialists, try and categorize the seizure type, age of onset, uh, physical exam, family history that helps tell us what type of epilepsy syndrome a patient may have. And once we know, if we think we know, if we can identify a specific epilepsy syndrome, then we can tell the family, this is the best, th this, these are some medications that we can try, number one, so what the best treatment plan would be, and number two, what is the prognosis? What is the ability of this patient to outgrow their epilepsy, or is it, t is it likely that the epilepsy is gonna be difficult to control? This year, another 200,000 people in the U.S. will be diagnosed with epilepsy. If you're going to recognize epilepsy, it's important to do it early, to identify the specific epilepsy syndrome, and get the child on appropriate therapy as soon as possible.